Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on powering your sustainability agenda with a transformed data strategy. I'm Rob O'Regan, Global Content Director with Foundry, formerly IDG, and I'll be your moderator today. We have a great panel of experts with us, starting with Rosie Mastrandrea, Senior Director of Sustainability Product Marketing at Microsoft. We'll also hear from Jay Mishra, TCS's Head of Data and AI in its Microsoft Business Unit, and we're pleased to be joined by uh, Vigard Torset, Project Director for the Digital Safety and Sustainability Program at Equinor. Let's get started. Um, let's talk a little bit about context first. What are the macro factors at play here that are driving greater attention to sustainability, particularly at the board level? Rosie, let's start with you. Companies are feeling the need for change coming in many directions uh, as the expectations for transparency are increasing around sustainability. Regulators are putting reporting requirements in place for companies, and this is increasing globally. Investors are putting financial pressure on organizations to make climate pledges and operate in more sustainable ways. Customers want information before making purchases on how products are manufactured and procured. And employees want to work for organizations that are making a difference. So you can see at a lot of different levels, there are things happening and, and trends um, and factors in play here. Jay, what's your take on on some of those factors that are that are driving that uh, that sustainability push? Oh, I, I absolutely agree with uh, Rosie. There are there are many factors uh, that are driving uh, the whole sustainability agenda. But what what has started making it much more you know uh, realistic for the organizations is is these policies, right? So for uh, European Union in April 2021 accepted the proposal for the corporate sustainability reporting directives and and one of the important requirement for this directive is for the companies to start reporting the sustainability information on the basis of esrs which is european uh, sustainability reporting standards what it also mandates that you know by uh, by 2025 uh, these companies have to report the sustainability information as part of their management reports and, and if we take it further, that means these companies have to start thinking now and today in terms of their internal processes, in terms of their controls, with regards to how they will be reporting this sustainable information, sustainability information uh, in, in equivalence to or at par with the financial information, you know, that could be audited uh, in a limited fashion soon and to a good assurance or reasonable assurance to a near time. What it means, uh, you know, that having no data is not an excuse for these organizations to start working towards their sustainability reporting uh, requirements coming in. Great. Uh, Vegard, please tell us a bit about Equinor and, and your ambitions and objectives around sustainability and achieving net zero. Hi, thanks, Rob. Uh, our strategy consists of three pillars and combines carbon efficient oil and gas production, accelerated uh, expansion in renewables and low carbon technologies and value chains. We recognize that the successful energy transition also must take account of its impact on people and nature. And for us, this means ensuring that our operations are carried out with respect for human rights and in a way that protects biodiversity and nature. And data and digitalization is recognized within Equinor as a key strategic lever to realize value and to support the safeguarding of the company and to deliver on these strategies. Can you talk a bit more about the role that data plays on the sustainability journey that you're on? You know, where are you now with the, with the strategy and, and where do you hope to be in the future? From an external perspective, uh, from re regulators, from customers, from rating agencies and other stakeholders, there are growing expectations for, for timely, accurate and verified ESG data. And we need to demonstrate and be transparent on the impact of our operations. Uh, also, uh, the double materiality concept acknowledges the fact that uh, risks and opportunities can be material both from financial and non-financial perspective. From an internal perspective, uh, unlocking and improved use of sustainability data in decision making should result in increased efficiency and sustainability performance improvements, alongside supporting also unlocking of new business opportunities. And data will, will be key to deliver on this. Uh, in Equinor, we are aiming for a holistic and long-term perspective, uh, translated to both short 
and long-term activities. And we think that combining technology, data, data governance with the organization, competence and culture dimensions will be important in this area. Rosie, what do you see as the as the key data challenges that companies are facing as they take on sustainability initiatives? And importantly, how is Microsoft helping organizations address some of those challenges? Yeah, there are a number of challenges for businesses as it relates to sustainability, and data is really at the heart of many of them. Siloed data is a big challenge for companies, um, even for those who have been reporting their admissions for years, and it's an inefficient practice to be reta retrieving data for um, their own suppliers and internally as well. And this really gets to value chain transparency where it's there's just not a lot of visibility as you look upstream and downstream of your operations to be able to get the data that you need for reporting. And frankly, a lot of this is happening in Excel spreadsheets today, so very manual processes. And when you think about being audited or auditability, um, those offline spreadsheets are not a very efficient and effective way to, to manage it. And then the last one I would say is a lack of standards and organizations are trying their best, but with a lack of industry and global st standards, there's really a struggle to ensure that they're meeting the needs from regulators. So as you think about what Microsoft is doing, we're really working to address many of these challenges with the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability. One of the key areas of investment is in unifying data intelligence. And the starting place for us is really building out a data estate of data and not only having Microsoft's own emissions in there for customers to be able to access for their value chain, but also customer data because everybody else, um, my data might be upstream for you or downstream for you. And so if we can aggregate that together and then bring in data from partner solutions too, who are focused on specific industries to get us to some of that last mile data. So really building out that data estate will help with data transparency and access uh, for, for lots of people. And then with the Microsoft Sustainability Manager, which is part of the cloud solution also, we're really looking at helping customers record their emissions footprint of their entire operations and value chain more accurately through direct data connections and automation, analyze, visualize, and report resource consumption, environmental impact, and sustainability progress, and then also to set goals and take action to reduce an organization's footprint. Another area that uh, is a good place to start is in building sustainable IT infrastructures and doing this by looking for opportunities to replace tools and systems or activities where there might be more efficient options that can actually also add business value. And one of the things to be looking at is on-premises workloads because just by moving to the cloud, customers can reduce their emissions footprint by 95%. Hey, that's that's good guidance. Uh, Bigard, what are the biggest data challenges you're seeing in uh, in implementing Equinor sustainability goals? Sustainability is a wide topic uh, with multiple sources of information. Uh, characteristics of this can often be legacy applications, silo based structures, lack of interoperability. Uh, in some cases, data is also only available in files or local drives and not easily consumable. And this generates significant amounts of uh, manual work and processes to deliver on requirements. Uh, and not having quality data readily available, that's one of the main obstacles to implement new technology and solutions. And as Rosie said, there's also a need for better, better standards. Uh, standards for storing, definition, sharing of data. Uh, this to be able to compare apples and apples, uh, but also to be able to handle data across the value chains and across companies. And this is especially important for scope three carbon footprint. Uh, today, there's too much room for interpretation and company specific standards. And this makes it really challenging to calculate total carbon footprint data within, with high quality. Yeah, those are certainly all uh, vital challenges to, to address. Jay, wh what role does data strategy play for your customers regarding sustainability? How are, how are they using it, not just for compliance, but to actually start to create some competitive advantage? Sure. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like Vegard said, you know, the foundation or the building data is is probably is, is the place which gives the competitive advantage for them, right? Having a an intelligent data platform uh, that will allow the customers to exploit their data properly to find the data you know correctly in fact even in a european green deal if you look at it they talk about a twin transition that means 
all the rosy when she talked about the manual processes, the absence of a data is a need for that digital transformation and digitalization, right? That you see as a data being used for a digital transformation and there's an investment associated with that. And then you apply the same data for a green initiatives. And we at a TCS, when we look that data with an intelligent data platform and infrastructure, we start seeing the ESG itself is a data domain products uh, from an, both environment, social governance and economic factors. And then, you know, if you look into that whole, you know, the mapping of the sustainability principles to the modern data principles, you know, starting from the, the basics, which is, you know, to have that self-serviced, self-managed, self-feeling data infrastructure, thereby allowing all the organizations to start investing their time and effort where they need to understand what should be reported rather than to work on a pure play data infrastructure and a platform. Now, once we have this core system, it starts addressing the basic issues of, you know, the data quality, the data governance, finding your data, which is about how do you deliver that reliable system of records? And again, you know, not just for sustainability today, for every organization, I think the, the, the problem is how do they exploit their data, the ability to know what is the dark data and start using it, is where this platform gives them a reliable system of records from a basic premises, which I talked earlier, the ability to be auditing, to be able to audit it against the information that is being provided. Then as you move forward, once you have the base data, the data insights, you, you could utilize that to get the insights to reduce your operational footprints, you know, in the context of a carbon emissions, in the context of, you know, uh, the circular economy and things like that. So that's where you start seeing the value of data insights, giving you the actions to be able to meet your targeted goals. And then further as you go up, then you start seeing the data at the sustainable value chain, right? And as we look into how the sustainability goals would be met or how the data would be required, certainly you require a cloud scale analytics. That cloud scale analytics will allow them to capture the data across the value chain from a partners to an internal system to an external systems. And also to have a domain focus, you know, how do you, have the specific priorities for the companies and look at those domains to drive some of those initiatives. So that's how you know if you look at there is a whole uh, maturity around how do you go about from a data infrastructure and a data strategy perspective. Of course, it needs to be mapped with the regulations and requirement and how this whole infrastructure could be flexible and adaptive to allow organization to change as these uh, regulations become much more mature and deployable. Vegard, you, you had mentioned earlier that uh, sustainability is a broad topic. It really does touch every aspect of the business. How are you aligning with your business counterparts within Equinor on sustainability goals? What types of conversations are you having with them? To have a holistic and long-term perspective, it's important to establish uh, a structured collaboration model uh, where to the technology organization, the business functions and the SMEs and the management works together on priorities and portfolio. We call this a triangular collaboration. Uh, and by this, we can secure a clear link to the corporate strategic dire direction and business need, doing the right things and using the capabilities right. Uh, and when we share information and coordinate, we can see the same picture. We can also communicate the same story. And this also helps to establish end-to-end uh, -end ownership uh, on our portfolio. Important to mention is also to have an open dialogue based on trust with, with the companies helping us in this area uh, and draw on their competence and the insight and experience that they have from, from the markets and from the peers. Great. Um, we've discussed a good deal about compliance and reporting and the data strategy that's needed. Rosie, what should forward-thinking companies be considering in terms of what's around the corner? Yeah, right now there's a lot of businesses focused on data gathering and around the corner, it's really shifting from data gathering to insights and action and leveraging things like AI and machine learning and having this incorporated into solutions so that businesses are able to direct their do dollars to the right place to be able to maximize the impact of their investments. 
setting goals and measuring outcomes is another key component and really none of us can accomplish any of these goals by ourselves so really thinking more about a collaborative approach and what are our shared goals how do we take collective action and then another thing um, is looking within organizations and potential changes that might need to happen in terms of roles focused on sustainability and ESG and how you're structuring around that and really creating a language that will enable more fluid communication across organizations. Right, um, Jay, same question to you. We'd love to hear your perspective on how what companies should be thinking about in terms of what comes next. I mean, uh, we discussed, I think the immediate priority for the companies uh, is to be ready for the, the regulations and being able to report their sustainability information uh, by 2025. So I think that data ingestion foundational data platform is a critical thing. But as the, the core foundation is set up, I would say there are two or three key things that sustainability is going to provide. And I'll I'll take a big picture view to say that this data infrastructure over a period of time would start creating, let's say, a digital twin for Earth, right? I mean, if I look into the environment, social and everything, what it means that, you know, ability to have a clone of, you know, every physical activities to have the information about it. So that's a digital twin for Earth is a critical information, a crit crit critical aspect of having data points for everything and anything. And the second, from a value chain perspective, which is a key thing and I think probably the most difficult thing to be achieved. Uh, the process twins uh, and the process twins essentially is the ability of technology to allow map your processes with the data so that you know let's say if you want to view your supply chain in the context of the whole partner and other ecosystem how do you see what is being impacted where so once you have this twin perspective across uh, you know, the dis earth twin, digital twin of earth versus the process twin, then the organizations can start playing with some of the things such as, you know, the predictive analytics, the what if scenario, the simulations, you know, how, how does certain parameters if being changed would result in what kind of changes. But that's, that's I believe, is, is a journey to be taken. Uh, our current priorities for the organizations is to be able to align to the ESRS standards, know what needs to be reported, uh, which which will allow them to be compliant with the things. And Vegard, as we as we wrap up, what's one final suggestion you'd make to your peers on today's session regarding their sustainability journey and the role of technology and data? Yes, uh, and maybe two recommendations. Uh, if you look at it uh, from an external perspective, I think no single company can solve this alone. And uh, collaboration and common standards are needed. And I would really encourage all companies to support and engage in initiatives trying to address this. Uh, from an internal perspective, uh, I would say pay attention to the groundwork because accessible and managed data with high quality that's the most important enabler to unlock the value of uh, digital tools and technologies. That's a great closing thought. Rosie, Vegard, Jay, thanks so much for your great information and insights today. Uh, and thank you for joining us today as well. We'd love to hear more from you and answer any follow-up questions, so feel free to reach out directly or visit the URLs included here.